Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. Today we're going to be continuing on post-metal week with a band that I believe is one of the founding bands for the post-metal genre. If not, then they're at least one of the most influential for it. Their name pops up a lot when we talk about post-metal, and they are Isis. Now we have a quite a few requests for Isis. We have requests from Mark Deccan, Santiago Puyol, Ryan Pattison, Water Guy Rocks, Richard Steffens, Sanskar Wagley, Dorian Bachigalupi, maybe. Uh, I apologize if I butcher any of these. Uh, Mark Deccan, again. Russell Clemens, Josh Stribling, Doran Bachigalupi, again. All right, I did not vet my list very well. I put this together a little hastily. We got multiple duplicates. Uh, Nick Chiriato, Striato, Ben, Edgar Castellones, or Castellon Castellones, Chad Downs, and Lesia Umanets. All right, we got we got some tough names for me today. I apologize again if any of those were butchered. Um, and the song that uh, ended up getting the most popular request was "So Did We." It was close. There were quite a few song requests. So did we just edged out with having the most requests. So that's what we're going to be checking out today. And uh, we'll probably see those names in that request pop up again. Because a lot of people requested Isis and Neurosis together. Uh, I guess a bit of a spoiler alert. We're doing Neurosis this week as well. So, Alright, let's see what Isis got for us. Dang, just getting right into that. baseline in the back there. The accent pattern on the drums isn't real crazy, but mixing it up with all the little uh, little fills really gives it like some intricacy that adds a lot of depth to the rhythmic elements. Yeah, so I like how the left guitar starts that, and then the right guitar can, comes in and continues that phrasing.
So I like how we have that opening or the soft drum section going on here with the uh, heavy distortion in the guitars. Actually, I think the entire soft part is present here. You got a little bit of variation on that section going on. So I can feel this in both 4 and in, in like 6-8. And honestly, given how slow the melody's moving, I'm not sure which one it's actually written in. And I really dig that ambiguity in the time. Yeah, and even though we've gotten heavier here, it's still just that same section we were in with some distorted guitar and heavier drums in it, like the cymbals have opened up. some really haunting use of dissonance in whatever that instrument is that's kind of sitting in the background. That's it. Yeah, I guess so that goes uh, into another track then, maybe, I don't know, with post-metal I guess anything is possible, That I guess it could just end right there. Uh, so, yeah, this has been the most enjoyable post-metal we've checked out so far for me. Uh, it still has a lot of the droning and repetition and sort of meditative aspects that we've seen in other post-metal bands that we've checked out, but to me, there's a lot more to latch onto here. There's a lot more traditional uh, 
music writing going on. And I really appreciate that. And I think it sounds great against the droning. Um, you know, even om almost right from the start, we had a vocal line. You know, he was screaming, but it was something to latch on to as a melody, uh, an overarching, you know, progressing element of the song that wasn't, you know, stationary, looping. I think that is kind of my thing, is that a lot of the repetition and droning make the song feel, make, have made the songs that we've listened to so far feel like they're standing still. There's no momentum to them. And, I mean, it's used to great effect, uh, like like we checked out, or like I said, in uh, one of the last two, I don't remember, I don't remember which one this was, but I said that, you know, there's a little bit of meditativeness to it. And, uh... The repetition helps if you're going to use it for that kind of, you know, journey where you just let your mind go and, and see where it wanders and stuff like that. Um, but as far as looking at it from a theoretic, um, a music theory perspective, I think this song just does a lot better because it has direction and momentum. And like I said, that doesn't mean it's better. That doesn't mean that you have to have direction uh, when you're writing a song, just for me and what I'm used to listening to, this just lines up better because it does. Um, and then we enter into the slow section, which has a lot of moving melodies. It might repeat, but the loops are so long that I don't notice it. Plus, there's layers. There are a lot of layers in some of the slower sections. Um especially as we get closer to the end and we start hearing multiple lines doing really cool things. Um, and then we enter into another heavy section. I think that was the order. And, uh, you know, we have the clean vocals with the little bit of distortion, a little bit of like grit going on in there. And uh, yeah, again, we have a, a melody, we have a lead line to help bring us through the section. And then I'm pretty sure, I mean, we, we just kind of bounce back and forth between these, uh, you know, completely clean guitar sections and then distorted guitar sections. But the really cool thing is we see a lot of theme and variation going on. There is repetition being used, but it's done on a larger scale. So instead of taking a four or eight bar phrase and looping it uh, repeatedly, you know, playing a riff over and over, uh, we're actually taking entire sections and repeating them with a bit of variation. Uh, right there at the end, we went from a like a clean section, and we just threw some distorted guitar in there, grittied it up, got it a little dirty, but a lot of those, acu not acoustic, the clean instruments were still present, still doing their same exact thing, but the section felt new because it had this new voice in it. Um... And then we added another voice, which is what I was talking about with the haunting dissonance. I don't know what that was. It was, I'm not going to say it was muddy, but it was, it was getting into the mix. It wasn't entirely distinct, and I think I was getting some other timbres mixed into it. But it sounded like a synth or some strings, maybe like a, a slightly modified organ sound. I don't, I don't know exactly what it was. But it was playing a, a lot of dissonance against some of the really beautiful stuff that was being played in the clean instruments. Uh, so the song ended on a very haunting, haunting tone, haunting atmosphere. Uh, not to say that the rest of the song wasn't menacing in its own right. There is definitely some aspects that there is, you know, that it was not all, you know, sugar pops and rainbows. <laughs> I don't know if people say that, but I, I, I just did. Um, but yeah, so I think a lot of the core elements of, you know, post-metal are here. We have the repetition, we have the droning, we have the re really gritty guitar tones, but we also see a lot more of the traditional musical elements than we have in, in other bands. Uh, and like I said, a lot of that is the lead lines, it's the layering, it's, uh, you know, the variation. 
Uh, and golly, the variation is so good. Um, like I said, I think it was the second time we got the heavy part. Uh, I noticed that the drum part was from the first soft section, the first clean section. And uh, yeah, it's, it's little touches like that. You little callbacks to what you've done before. Why reinvent the wheel, right? I mean, theme and variation sounds... I don't I don't know how it sounds to some people. I, I could understand if some people get the connotation that it's lazy writing. You're just copying what you did before. But it's a key part to, fan, to some of the best, you know, musical writing. Some of the most praised classical compositions are based on taking ideas you've already written and bringing them back with new context. All right, so... Yeah, I love seeing that. When you can take an idea you've already written, and it was a good idea. I called that drum part out at the beginning. <laughs> I said, this is a great guitar part. It has really cool syncopation, but it isn't too complex. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, accents that are very easy to follow along with. But he changes it up by putting little one to two beat fills around it. Uh, so it's not complex on its own, but it is. it does get complex when you view the part as a whole. And he took that part and just brought it back. And I loved it when it was there to begin with. But in the new context, it really shined because there's a lot of movement. There's a lot more energy around it that fit a lot better with the drum part. Um, and yeah, it's just little things like that when you can hear the callbacks. And there were two or three of these sections that had elements from older uh, you know, sections. They brought back guitar parts. They brought back uh, you know, melody lines. They brought back guitar or drum parts. Um, I fully understand why people recommend Isis. If I, if this was my introduction to post-metal, well, first of all, I probably would have enjoyed post-metal right off the bat. But second of all, I'm kind of glad it wasn't because it makes me, this is, this has definitely been my favorite so far. So I think I would have been a bit disappointed if we had checked this one out first and then we're like, all right, we're going to continue post-metal week. And then we check out Russian circles, which is like, to me, the opposite on the post-metal frame. It's even grungier, it's even dirtier, it's even more repetitious, it's lacking the melody lines. You know, it's, it's like a very distilled, honed-in version of post-metal, trying to push post-metal to, uh, to its breaking point, as far as I see it. You know, it went completely in the, the, the droning, uh, meditative side, whereas this still has a lot of ties to traditional music writing um so yeah if i had started with this i probably would have been a bit more disappointed going into uh uh celeste and russian circles but coming into this third i'm like okay so i've seen you know an extreme end uh so to speak of post-metal now i'm seeing something a little bit more melodic something more in my wheelhouse so i um yeah, I'm excited to see what else Post Metal has. And I think that's one of the cool things that um, I don't think I've really pointed out before. Maybe I have unconsciously, just kind of rambled past it maybe. But even though we're doing a genre week, there's still a lot of wiggle room for what can happen in that genre. Uh, even when we checked it out, what was it? Um, classic Prog, when we were doing like 70s Prog stuff, you know, uh Yes, prog has a feel. It has an identity. When you listen to a prog song, you're like, yeah, that's prog, definitely. But yes, and Genesis and King Crimson, they all had their own style of prog. Prog was still a big balloon, even though it has a sound that you can hear. And same thing with post-metal and most bands, and or not most bands, most genres. And I need to remember that, that just because you're in a, you know, you're labeled as a genre and you might have some of the characteristics or qualities of that genre doesn't mean you're like the other people in the genre. There is a wide spectrum, so to speak, of what that genre can be. And there are people who are more conservative, sticking to some of the cores, and bands that are more liberal and sticking, I mean, and, and kind of pushing the genre to its limits and seeing how far they can get while still being, you know, labeled as the genre. And obviously that's not how people make music. They don't say, okay, I'm, I'm going to make a post-metal song, but we're going to see how progressive, you know, it can be. Can we get that prog, you know, prog post-metal label? Um, but it's an interesting way to view music after the fact. 
to kind of see, uh, you know, the music being pushed in different directions, even though it wasn't their intent. So, yeah, I dig this, though. This, this is something I could get into. Uh, I, I do wish there was maybe not more lyrics but more lead lines. I really appreciate the, the soft parts. They have melody to them, but it's sort of like an overlapping riff-based melody. Like, it feels melodic and moving because there's so many parts that are constantly coming into and going out of focus and having their own little repetition, and it doesn't feel like it's repeating. But overall, there is you know, in the larger scheme of things, there is repetition going on, and there technically isn't a melody line to uh, drive it forward. It's more of an illusion of a melody line, which also is really cool. Like, on a first listen, uh, you know, the first, I think it was the first time we hit that uh, uh, a clean section. I'm like, okay, you know, this, this has melody. We have driving force here. Uh, but as the song evolved, and I started paying more attention to all the different pieces and I could hear how they fit together. Uh, you know, there is a lot of repetition going on and there isn't a melody. But it definitely feels like there is. And that's a really cool achievement. So, yeah, though, I, I dig this. I dig this a lot. I could, I could, yeah, I could listen to Isis. If, if, if you know, this is their wheelhouse. I mean, for all I know, this is kind of an outlier where they tried to do something a little bit more melody-based, but the core of their work is the repetitive droniness that Post Metal's known for. So, I don't know. I really dig this song, though. This is where you guys come in, though. Hit me up with recommendations for Isis. And if they do write more of the stuff that's like Russian Circles, I'd prefer the stuff. Uh, that's more like whatever this one's called. So, so did we. Uh, but it's always important to see the breadth of a, of a creative work. So hit me up with anything from these guys, whether it's more of the same or something different. I will check it out. You can also let me know what you think about these guys and maybe how you view them in the larger mythology of post-metal. Uh, you know, how they sit against bands like Russian Circles. Russian Circles has been asked for a lot recently. And, uh, yeah, for, for a band so popular in my comment section, they were not what I was expecting. Isis kind of was. Uh, you know, it's a highly requested band, and it fit in with a lot of the stuff that I enjoy with music. And that's kind of, that's kind of how I view it typically. A lot of you guys uh, like me to like it when I check out stuff that I enjoy. Personally, I feel like maybe I could just be reading into that and I just really like the stuff you guys really like. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, the highly requested stuff I usually dig. So, yeah, Russian Circles was, was a little bit of an outlier in that, in that mentality. But uh, that's cool. I, I like being pushed, uh, you know, and, and seeing the, first of all, some of the fringes of music. Like, highly repetitive droning music is not... Uh, that's not something I think I've heard before. Uh, so it's really cool to see that that exists. Like somebody thinks, hey, we should write music that, you know, is just a constant loop. And then the other cool thing is people listen to that and they're like, yeah, this is amazing. This is the best thing I've ever heard. And it's, it's just really cool to see how musical tastes are so diverse. Like, uh, like you know, everybody has different tastes. You know that. That's just a fact of life. But then you hear stuff that uh that you just don't get like I don't really get Russian circles or even Celeste to a lesser extent post metal up until today I I don't really get like I understand what's going on it just doesn't click with me and having so many people in the comments like yeah this is amazing I need to check these guys out or thanks for finally checking this band out they've been my favorite for years uh, you know, it's, it's that little reality check, like, yeah, you know, everybody has different musical tastes, and it's not just, like, some people like pop and some people like metal, like, there's very specific genres that I might not ever get into that people just love, so, yeah, that's always, a like, a really cool reality check, even though I know everybody's tastes are different, like, sometimes there's things that I just don't get, 
and I have to remember, you know, people people still enjoy this, even though I don't. I, I am not, a, you know, an eternal tastemaker of music. So, yeah, you guys can, uh, you know, hit me up in the comments. So let me know what you guys thought of ISIS. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess we're going to end this video here. Because <laughs> I'm done rambling. I should I should change my name. Like, we shouldn't be critical reactions. We should be rambling reactions. I feel like that's all I do sometimes. <laughs> I just ramble. All right. So, uh, you know, above the comment section, there's some buttons. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell. All three of those things help out the channel immensely. And if you're interested in being updated about the channel, they help you out immensely as well. Underneath that is a description box with links for all sorts of things relating to the channel. Blocked videos. Uh... Patreon, PayPal, uh, the, 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 the reaction spreadsheet, if you want to add a request uh, manually, that's the way to do that. There's all sorts of links in there. You can check them out uh, on your free time. Or, you know, on somebody else's free time. On someone else's time. I don't care. You do whatever you want. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. There will not be a special selection today. Uh, as we started last week, all special selection is on weekends now to kind of free up my week to uh, give me a little bit more time uh, and not be running around like a headless chicken during the middle of the week because homeschooling takes a lot of time. And then I still got to fit this in and cooking and stuff. So, yeah, I just kind of offloaded some of that work to the weekend where I have more free time to put towards the uh, the channel. All right, so yeah, I'll be back tomorrow at 5, and uh, you guys stay safe and healthy and awesome, and uh, have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my video. Also, new catchphrase incoming. Still got to test it and remember it and stuff like that, but yeah, we're going to have a new finishing line. I ruined my flow, and I don't know how to end this now. Thank you.